So, moving on to uniforms. This is the camp comforter. Uh, I don't know if you can see it that well, but um, basically made out of wool and um, so here it is and it's very nice and warm boiling as I found out today at Manor Farm reenactment um, so it falls out like this and can then fold out even further so it's like this and you can wear it as a scarf but I wear it as a hat because I can and it I'm not going to need a, a scarf anytime soon seeing as it's the summer um, so yep and I already got kind of a scarf on so yep that's that uh, my grand knitted this for me uh, it's quite common I believe for them just to be knitted for the soldiers by people uh, there was a a uh, scheme I think made out by the WI where they'd knit uh, or might have been the Women's Voluntary Service WVS they knitted stuff like this for soldiers so yep yeah, that's that um, moving on to the uh, tunic uh, well before that I'll just show you this um, this is called a scrum net um, very common amongst paratroopers commandos that sort of thing and I've seen a photograph of an auxiliary wearing one of these so I decided I wear it um, turn my top button up anyway so uh, this is my uh, my denims my denim battle dress this is my denim battle dress blouse uh, you can see here that I have got home guard patches uh, so Devon 4 that's a basketball uh, platoon um, of the home guard uh, but I really need to get um, a patch which says 203 and the 203 is the AUX unit patch um, so I can say Devon 203 would be the uh, the AUX units for Devon and W203 uh, would be the Wiltshire um, D could be Dorset. Two or three will be um, Dorset. The years S two or three Somerset and so on, so on, so on. I won't list any more counties, but I'm just listing all the West Country counties because um, it was quite common. Uh, all students were quite common around there. So, yep. Um, there's pattern forty denims, uh, the economy version. Um, and so yep, yeah, I did have another pair of these, but I sold them because they're original um, and for a lot of money, uh, 45 quid for each of them, which I think was very good. I don't know what I spent it on, but whatever. Um, so yeah, um, I think I spent some of the money from it getting this. Um, and he, here are the trousers. Uh, um, so, can you see that? I can't see what I'm doing, but there you go. And I've got my socks on there, so I don't have any boots on. Um, so I'll get to those in a minute. Um, and the socks are just army issue socks. Um, if you really want to see them, just army issue socks. So, yeah, um, the, uh, here is a pocket for like maps or anything like that that you'd need. And here is supposedly a thing for first field dressing, apart from it's bloody useless because I can't get one in there. So, yep, yeah. uh, if I turn around you can see it's got two pockets on the bum. Um, so. Yep, that's basically that. It also has two fixes here and here to attach the blouse to the trousers, which creates it like a sign suit. Um, and that is very useful because it works on denims, doesn't work with anything else. If it's surge, it completely just is a pain in the ass. 
excuse my French, um, kids just basically just rides up, rides up, rides up, the buttons pop out, and then you get your battle dress riding up and you're webbing, itching against your skin, and then it rides your shirt up, and then it's wool on bare skin, which is really, really painful. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is 1953 dated, I believe. Uh, the blouse and then the trousers are 1946 dated, or it could be 1948 dated. Um, and so, yeah, that's it. It's got button flies. Um, and so, yep, yeah, it's got uh, standard buttons. This was pattern 40 denims, were denims in general were mainly issued to. Um, to the home guard they were however issued to tank crews um, and other people um, I believe that the Germans did capture some denims uh, from some commandos I believe and they then kind of appropriated them and slightly changed them and turned them into use for I think it was U-boat crews um, so you sometimes see U-boat crews walking around in denims. The only thing that they've done is just chopped off these um, and changed the insignia, obviously. Um, so, yep, this is it. It can button all the way to the top. Um, and it's got two hooks here and here. And they just hook up like that. I can't do it because I can't see what I'm doing um, very well. But, yep, so... That's the jacket. I'll show you what I got inside the pockets now. So inside this pocket first, I've got this, which is a general service timepiece, original. Um, I think it could be 1944-45 dated um, due to the seal number, I believe, on the back. Um, so yeah, I got it on a watch chain attached to here. Um, and inside here I have got um, my travel pass and my identity card. Um, so yeah, there's reproduction one. Uh, one thing it fails with majorly that the German ones didn't um, is that it doesn't have a photograph. Um, okay, you could say someone changes, but you could just get a new photograph done. And that's another the inside of another one. So. Um, Yep, and so basically if someone stole your ID card they could use it and no one would know that it isn't you, apart from if they ask questions, but the, anyway, so that's uh, just a picture of a home guard soldier, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, um, yep, I'm not sure if this is home guard or LDV, I think it's home guard, uh, and this is of, um, I believe the ones in Portsmouth, because what happened is the ones in Portsmouth, they were originally issued with SMLEs, this is just slightly before Dunkirk, and all the British uh, Expeditionary Force came back, like 99% had abandoned their rifles, um, and or they were put onto a ship, which was going to be shipped back, but then I believe was sunk or didn't make it out of the harbour. Anyway, um, lots of the soldiers returned. Most of them didn't have their rifles, so the poor Portsmouth Home Guard had their lovely SMEs taken away from them and given to the regular army because uh, there was no way that Britain could produce um, more weapons um, and they wouldn't really want basically old men and boys having weapons that could basically be issued to the best troops, which is basically what Germany failed with because they gave. Volksgrenadier, battalions, SDG 44s and stuff like that and some of them were basically just boys and old men or well, a large amount were instead of giving units such as 12th SS Panzer Division if you took a kit all of USS units out with Schoengewehrs and stuff like that instead of giving it to basically old men and boys then it might have been slightly different um, anyway, so a picture of a supposed lover etc um, and so 
here I've got um, Willy Woodburn's um, cigarettes original packet I am really annoyed that I've allowed it to get so fudged up if you get what I mean uh, Spitfire um, card they used to put them in uh, cigarette packaging and fake cigarettes not real ones obviously because um, I would be doing something against the law if I was uh, having real ones and I would be ruining my health so yeah um, what else have I got in here um, I've got a leave pass um, this will be for uh, basically soldiers that I could basically be my character is that I was I lied about my age I joined up I was in the BEF came back I was badly wounded in Dunkirk came back and so I was unfit for duty and um, so I joined the auxiliars um, so yep original lighter um, silver plated uh, there's a hallmark there and polo and some other writing I can't remember what it says made in England and yeah I'm gonna have to restore this heavily because it's very gunky um, so yeah, there's that and I've got some coins in here too um, an interesting coin that I did find whilst I was rooting through a box of coins at an uh, antique fair was this one and you see it's all badly deformed it looks like someone's either shot it with a rifle that's been hit by something blooming hard uh, this is 1935 dated coin there so Yep, and then there's a whole lot of other coins. Uh, there's two shilling piece, and there's 43 dated thirpenny bit, um, and 1936 penny, um, and yeah, I, I won't show you all those because it doesn't really matter. I'm not showing you a coin video. Um, so, yep. Here I've got um, my wallet, and inside this I've got a whole load of other personal items, like say, such as a uh, home guard photograph. Um, you can see these all issued with P14s, uh, P17s, um, which are basically what the home guard was mainly issued with. That is my local home guard unit. Um, so, yeah, just thought I'd add that. And there's another local home guard unit. Well, I think this is the main home guard unit, and that's like the whole of the area's unit, if you get what I mean. Anyway, so here is an original photograph of a World War II soldier. Um, around about. 19, 1939, 40, 41, something like that. Um, partially because he's got an SD cap, and he, it, I believe, after 1941 or 42, they started issuing um, the GS Berry. So, yeah, I think this could be an officer, um, partially because uh, the strangeness of the coat that he's wearing. Um, and I got a letter home. This came in a replica pack. Um, I'm not going to read you it because that's what this video is not about. Um, and that is it in that pocket. And in here I have got a handkerchief. Um, Army issue handkerchief modern. I think it's 80s. But anyway handkerchief so handkerchief um, and last piece of pocket litter I believe is lighter Zippo uh, the only the one the second lighter that I managed to get to work there you go it pulls it up because it gets very warm after a couple of seconds 
Um, so, yep, that's basically the uh, glitter. And now move on to a shop. 